What's better than cracking open nine packs of Pokemon cards, spin in a wheel containing anything from new evos to paradox forms and more, and then drawing those forms? Well, I'll tell you exactly what. New shiny Pokemon in the cards! They knew what they were doing when they made it possible to get shinies in card backs. I'm very happy to come back to this as the first one was a ball. This time because it's not just one card pack, but nine, and I'm not doing like 90 designs for a video, I'm going to spin the wheel for the cards I got and removing any doubles I already created a design for from the previous pack. Let's not delay and open up our first pack. I have returned and I have some Paldean Fates card packet. Um, as you can see, I got the box. Let's open up some card packs and I think I might do maybe two or one this video and we'll um we'll draw for them if we get any repeats from the last episode we might not do them but yeah i'm excited let's just jump straight into it shall we start with shiny serial edge the most boring shiny of all time get that baby open let's uh get rid of the code card first so no one can steal it Alright, let's begin with our first pack. There we got <laughs> Little again. Why is it always you, Flittle? Flittle? Haldane Whooper, very cute. A Grievard with Graveyard Gambling. A Charcadet, okay, that's cool. An Oinkalone, beautiful. Wive. I wish we knew who that really was. And... Primeape, okay, okay. And a Chimaco. Cute, cute. Okay, what we got for the last one? We've got... Mastiff. Oh wait, no, there's one more, isn't there? And... Oh, Fortress EX! Oh, look at that! Got the shine and everything, it's got the... Well, I guess grass, but I think it's bug terror energy. So cool. The grass type energy. All right. That's a great one. Everything except for Flittle's new, so let's jump into it. So now we'll spin number one for what design we get and spin. Oh, we got Pooper. And next, let's jump to what form it's going to take. And we got Future Paradox. Nice, a Robo Pooper. Creating a Future Paradox for this cutie was a pretty painless experience. I wanted to combine all the fun of a Tamagotchi with those Robo Dogs they used to sell. I don't know if people who watch this are old enough to remember these things, but they... Well, they weren't amazing by any standard. They would bark, sit up and like, flap their ears. They wouldn't walk around, uh, and they'd make noises when you put the plastic bone they came with in their mouth. That's not that great. <laughs> Honestly, the design is pretty aesthetic at least, so this is sort of the angle I was coming from. The whole thing would be this Tamagotchi head leaning to a very regular whooper looking body with those cool Future Paradox energy motifs, and then ending in a sort of chain link carabiner tail. I know this is supposed to be a Future Paradox, but the idea of being this little pooper that attaches to your pants belt loop and just swings around with this big goofy grin was too much to handle. The biggest tragedy here is not being able to do a Future Clod Sire as well. It was really hard not to just spend this entire pot gushing about how good of a design Clod Sire is, but I shall hold my tongue for the day we get Clod Sire in one of these booster packs. Iron Plaything, the Paradox Pokemon of Arian Ground Type. In a certain sci fi magazine, they speak of a machine that kids of the future fell in love with a portable pet that would never leave their side and required no batteries. The clip at the end of Iron Plaything's tail allows one to attach it to your keys belt anywhere really, and bring it along with you even without a Pokeball. The protrusions coming from the sides of their head change shape to help show the moods of Iron Plaything. If they are gone then it is a serious emergency. Iron Plaything has the ability Quark Drive. 
All right, next packet. We got the shiny Tinker Tongue. Come here. Tear into this. I'm excited. I'm keen. I'm going to open. I'm keen. Ah, there we go. And the code card. Oh, they don't actually show the code on the back, so that's handy. Okay, let's uh, take that away. And flip it. Oh, give me go. That's a cute card. I don't know. So, no chest or flage. Mm, okay. Scraggy. Oh, Scraggy. <laughs> Little. Back again. All right. Paldean and Whooper again. Okay. An electric generator. Weird. It looks like a can. Charminion! A technical machine crisis punch? Oh, that's interesting. And, oh, a little Fido. Very cute. A Gengar? Oh, that's nice. And... Feathers Research. Yeah, not as exciting as Fortress, but still cool. And of course, the electric energy. Awesome. All right, let's go. All righty, let's spin the next one. And we got Gimme Ghoul, a super cute card. And let's next spin for form. Alrighty, your regional form, interesting. So this one was a toughie. Taking the Gimme Ghoul out of the chest was my first idea, but I had to think about where this form of Gimme Ghoul would come from. And then it dawned on me. What about a Unovan form of Gimme Ghoul? One that took inspiration from American kind of blockbuster tropes, heist bank robbery movies, as well as superheroes themselves. This idea also stemmed from it kind of looking like Gimme Ghoul already had this sort of superhero or bank robber mask already on their face. Because they are all about money, I decided to go very silly with it and give it a dollar or I guess pokey dollar note for a cape. It'd flow in the wind as it flies about in all of its goofy glory. Because the original was based off item dowsing rods with their head parts, I contorted them a bit to turn them into sort of a superhero cowlick shape tipped with diamonds. The original idea was that it was going to have diamond grills, so I think this just works a lot better. Man, thinking about the potential Evo for this one would be wild. Some kind of diamond villain robber, maybe with a parachute made of banknotes. Again, silly, but about as silly as Goldango was. Gimme Ghoul, the coin hunter Pokemon, a steel and flying type. Unovan form. Gimme Ghouls one day found their way to Unova. With no chests inside, they started to take anything shiny and used any means of escape at their disposal. Adapting an ability to fly, they speedily creep into banks and will take banknotes and coins and stash them away in their hideouts. Most Gimme Ghoul at some point or another have taken diamonds and has set the entire city into high alert. They sometimes will help other Pokemon, showing great bravery when required. They usually do after, however, ask for some kind of glittering compensation. This form of Gimme Ghoul has the ability Magician. And we're back with more Shining Fates card openings. This time we've got the Pikachu Paldean Fates card. Let's jump straight into opening this up. See what glorious things we end up getting. Eh. Pikachu. Open. Open for me. Well, right. oh, throw that away. Okay. Flip it and grieve out of the graveyard again, bowling. Another chalk at it. Clubber Poos, cute. Clubber Poos, Clubber Poos, cute. The room, oh, that's an interesting art style. Wrap locked, oh cool, we've got both, okay. Nemoto's backpack, oh, one of the best items in the game. Oh, that's a cool card. That's really cool. Oh! I didn't expect that. 
That's so cool. A shiny Revan room. Oh, yes. That's amazing. And the other professor's research. Hell yeah. Oh, hello, Heat Rotol. Oh, that's... Yay. So awesome. And a fire energy. All right, I'm feeling good about that one. Spin time. And we got the shiny Rever Room card. I know what's going to be going into the thumbnail for this video. And for the second spin, we got another regional form. Again, this one was tough. We have Legend Zar here. I wanted to make a Colosian form for Rever Room. And through some research, I found that a French person created the first internal combustion engine. Mainly used for water vehicles at first, called the Paraleo 4. Apologies for pronunciation. Although this one is a water fairy type. Mainly for it being connected to boats and that it made dust explosions to run, which sounds very fairy to me. It would probably have been more toxic than the engines of today, but hey, this is Pokemon. We don't need to have it fully attached to real life. This Revver Room moves its weird mouth tongue thing to the back and overall just looks a lot happier. I wanted to kind of keep it for the most part close to the Revver Room body shape because the actual engine itself looks pretty long. Revver Room would probably chug along through the water in this form with its two side wheels. Sadly, that does mean it would also fly above the ground like its pal and cousin. It's giving very much Galarian wheezing energy and I'm here for it. Revivroom, the multi-sealed Pokemon, a water and fairy type, Colosian form. In comparison to their Paldea form, Revivroom from Kalos seem to be a bit simpler and friendlier, in general. The steam it produces from the top of its body can help with congestion and other ailments. It even sparkles wonderfully too. They live around bodies of water as they require it to move about. You will see large swaths of this Pokemon sloping down water with their massive tongues and zooming off in a herd. It despises poisonous gases and will quickly run away from exhaust fumes from cars. A massive difference from the Paldean form. Revivroom in this form has the ability Steam Engine. Alright, up next we've got... Shiny Dondozo with a little Tatsugiri in there. Commanding him. Very fitting. Alright, let's uh... Oh, come on. There we go. I'll undress them. And throw the pack away. Take that out. I believe we've got a shiny already. Alright. Club of Puss. The room. Mankey. Okay, that's a new one. Cool. Magma. An Ultra Ball. Very important item. Oh, mouse hole. Family attack. Family. Roomlet Hill. That's cool. A reverse holo lechon. A reverse holo whimsical. Oh, that's a very cute card. I like that. And. Hmm. Oh, that is cool. And exactly if it was shiny, it would be even cooler. But this is sick. Oh. I love that. Man, I feel lucky. <laughs> and the metal energy. Whatever. Alrighty. Spin time. Come on, I want great tusk. And we got mouse hold. Not the worst, I guess. And second spin, we got Evo. Well, I guess let's follow Legend's Zar suit and make a Mega Mouse hold. I've done a Mouse hold Evo before, which could also work as a Mega, and funny enough, the one I did here also could work the same. The idea for this one was a bit like how Mega Kangaskhan works. The babies get a sudden Mega Energy Growth spurt, but so does the parents. 
I like to call these guys Rough Mouse because they like to rough house around. This is partially inspired by the Rat King myth. Well, I guess it isn't a myth, just a bunch of rats with their tails smushed together. But they are all joined at the tail now with two rowdy teens jumping on the parents, who are now a bit older and not as fast as they used to be. Mouse Soldiers is a very simple and effective design, so I wanted to make sure even with how Mega Evos push the complexity of designs, to not lose that here. So the older two Mouse Holds, Mies Helds, have their mouth markings go down like the old people wrinkles, while the kids get red dot markings on their face to look a bit like acne. How's that for rapid growth spurt? I chose normal fighting type for these guys as I felt it fitting if the two teens are just beating up everything in their way including themselves. Mega Mouse Hold, the family Pokemon, a normal and fighting type. Reacting to the Mouse Hold died allows Mouse Hold to Mega Evolve, causing a sudden transformation in age for all family members involved. The two smaller Mouse Hold become teenagers. Rowdy and rough, they fight incredibly recklessly, and will sometimes turn on each other and fight between each other wildly, till they start to shed tears. The original adult Mouse Holds are much older, slower, but wiser. They help keep the two others reined in and will prevent infighting. All of Mousehold's tails are tied together, meaning a fainted Mousehold becomes dead weight for the whole team. In this form, Mousehold has the ability Scrappy. Hey, before we continue on, make sure to comment if you want to see more of these, especially with new sets coming out often. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't. Alright, I've said my piece. Back to the openings. Alright, I'm coming back with the... Shiny Tinkerton. I fumbled opening it before, so it's slightly pre-opened, but that's good because now I don't have to worry so much. I might show me fumbling in the video, but whatever. Alright, we've got Menke. A Magma. Nimona. Oh cool. Oh, uh, Charmander. Cool. A nest ball. Important. Lantern. Very cute. Wing cologne. A reverse holo rev sorry, reverse holo room. A reverse holo Iono, that's cool. And I'm a bustiff shiny. Very nice. No, well, not shiny. Holo. Cool. Yeah, not the most exciting packet, but it'll do. Let's spin the spin again. And then we got, ooh, my boss stiff. Very fun. And for spin two, we got, no oh, past paradox. I've done a few Paradox Dogs now, even one you haven't seen yet for a video, and I usually choose something wildly different for the creatures for their designs. I chose the Andrasarchus for the design from a Bostiff. It looks like a dog, but was more closely related to things like camels and deer. Pretty cool if I'm being honest, but it'd be a longer, more feral looking Bostiff, even though we are already pretty well feral with the normal design. Mabostiff is one of those Pokemon that definitely got carried by being in the storyline with Arvin. I do love the design being a mob boss sort of dog that can pair well with a nice Honchkrow. It's one of those Pokemon where it sells the design pretty well. I see Mabostiff and go, yeah, mob boss dog, that's the fat Tony of Pokemon. I love in many of Mabostiff's art, it's just barking and got that wild face. It's great in something a lot of Pokemon don't have, and this is weird to say, but... Many Pokemon can't look so placid than just outright feral in this form. My Mabostiff Paradox called Bully Jaw looks a bit more piggish and has no choice in looking feral. It's always got them jaws hanging out, showing them spiky teeth. Bully Jaw, the Paradox Pokemon, a dark and rock type. According to an article in a dubious magazine, this Pokemon seems to be one of the earliest Pokemon related to Mabostiff, as well as other similar Pokemon. It has a vicious temperament and will lash out and bite at anything in front of it. Even without the biting, Bully Jaw has a fast charge attack and will throw their weight into every tackle. It'll bully weaker Pokemon into submission and make them do the hunting instead. Bully Jaw, however, will take all the spoils and let their subordinates starve. Bully Jaw has the ability Protosynthesis.
All right, next one we've got Sarah Ledge again. Maybe I won't mess up the opening as badly this time. Oh, I sort of did, but I'm failing upwards, so that's a win. Hit. Hit. There we go. All right, take that out. Flip them. Oh, we got a Nemoza this time. Cool. Charmander again. A rare candy. Very cool. Oh, cute little panda mouse card. The other one. That's very cute. A Charmeleon. Duck Spun. We've... Yeah. How come that's... That must be re reprinted. What's... Pass end. Okay. Well, we have another Duck Spun from the Skull and Violet set. Camera up. Cool. I actually really like that art. And, uh, Reverse Hollow Haunter. That's a cool card. And, whoa! <gasps> oh my god! A shiny Wug Trio full art. That is so cool. And I love how the, the like, holographic doesn't actually affect the Wug Trio as well. Ah, oh, that's amazing. And a shiny Serral Edge. Oh, cool. All right. That's awesome. And look, no, I'm just kidding. All right. That was a really good packet. Let's spin that wheel. Oh, Haunter. Interesting. And spin number two is... Evo. Ha, a new Evo for Haunter. I went into this knowing I'd never create anything better than Gengar. It's impossible, so the idea was more, what if we didn't trade Haunter and it evolved in a different way? Gengar is based off doppelgangers and very similar to Clefable. So what if Haunter was based off a different myth creature and based a bit off Marchamp when it evolves? This Haunted Evo is based off the Dullahan and Haunted Statues. It's this Adonis body of a statue with little leggies and feetsies with an almost Haunter-like head that is connected to the body only by a roaring, ghostly, or should I say ghastly flame. And the hands are here giving us Rayman energy, but now we've doubled it. I love the idea of this thing sort of shifting along, the body barely moving while the head and hands bob out and do all the animation. I'm kind of living for the almost buff Gengar vibes this has. I chose Ghost Rock type as we don't have one properly yet and the whole statue deal. Ghost fighting also works as this thing would literally be able to throw hands with anyone. Dullahand, the headless Pokemon, a rock and ghost type, evolves from Haunter after defeating a Pokemon with a rock type while holding any evolution stone. A statue now inspirited by Haunter has transformed it into Dullahand. The actual body floats ominously around while the head and hands can move independently of one another. It can turn its head invisible and pretend to just be a statue till its target comes close, then it will jump out in an attempt to scare them to death. If Dullahan catches a soul, it will place it within the ghostly fire, making it even stronger and hunger for more souls to power it. Dullahan have the abilities huge power and reckless. There you go. Alright, <laughs> Pikachu. Ready to open. Tear him open. Just, just gore. Gore everywhere. Yeet it. Take the code card. Let's hope for something cool again. Rare candy, very cool. Panda mouse, cute. Barboach, that's a new one. You looks, you look weird, Barboach. Oh, new more, very cute. Flyab again. We'll never find out who he really is. Primate, yeah. Where's the annihilate? Ultra Ball, cool. <laughs> oh man. I don't know if I'm lucky or not, but shiny Polo Vile Plume. That's a great card. I love that. And a reverse holo primate. Finally. Oh. I promise that was not staged. Shiny Annihilate. That's awesome. Okay, really cool. 
and the grass energy, whatever. Wow, another cool bot. Wow. I feel lucky. We have a lot of monkeys in this role, and speaking of monkeys, we got the difficult to spell Annihilate. And spin number two, we got... Oh, an Evo or Mega Evo again. Well, I'll never say no to Mega Annihilate. So Primeape started playing video games and got so mad he died and became Annihilate. So where do we go for a Mega? Well, I thought how about he leaves this mortal coil entirely. Mega Annihilate is a ghostly spirit now, unshackled fully but happy. No more rage, no more monkey. This Annihilate floats along like the stereotypical ghost with no legs. The shackles floating next to it as a reminder of its past. The angry eye is gone. He has more of like a vacant open eye expression that I think works well for the ghostliness. If I haven't said it before, I'll say it again. Getting cross-gen Evos back makes me so happy. The new designs the Game Freak gave us from Frig Giraffe to Annihilate all slap so hard. It makes me so excited to see where we go next. Hopefully in Legends are. And hey, now we can have an official Annihilate Mega. I ended up giving this Mega a sort of ghostly blue to the colors. It went gray initially due to the whole passing away thing, but now it's just a true ghost. Oh, so spooky. Mega Annihilate, the Rage Monkey Pokemon, a fighting ghost type. Reacting to the Annihilate allows Annihilate to Mega Evolve, breaking its shackles fully and leaving its mortal body behind, but becoming truly at peace. It moves around as a wandering spirit. Almost nothing can truly disturb the Pokemon. The anger that once controlled it can only truly come out when it's fully enraged. They are a sentimental Pokemon holding onto the shackles that once held them to the mortal world. If something strikes these shackles, it becomes the target of Annihilate. It will go through walls and no other objects will stand in its way. Annihilate has a new ability called At Peace in this form, where this Pokemon is immune to stat lowering and raising effects and can't be affected by taunt. Okay, let's um... Open up this Dondozo packaging. Come on, all about speed. Speed, speed rip, yeah, that's what we want. D robe. Oh no, we're gonna throw the cards instead, and I'm gonna be really upset. Okay, we got. Bubbo. Numo. Maractus, yay! Oh, that's a cute card. Palian student. They sure are. Scrofty, oh cool. I love that. That's such a cool card. Swoobat! Yay! Very cute. Artisan, I do not care. Reverse holo execute, interesting. And the reverse holo lantern, cool. Final card is a shiny Mimikyu. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, not the most exciting one, but you know, whatever. Second last spin and we got... no nah, Lantern. Yeah. And we got Future Paradox. Okay, I can dig this. I've already done a submarine Future Paradox with Iron Vessel, so I didn't want to go fully that route with Lantern. Instead, this one is more like an unmanned deep sea search vehicle. Because Future Paradox has changed aspects of the design, I wanted to make it so that Lantern still kept the glowing orb parts, but changed them more to be the tips of a satellite search disc. And later on in the art, I changed them to be a bit spiky like they're letting out a glowing flash. I definitely don't hate Lantern, but its design irks me. I love Chinchou a lot, but then when it evolves, it changes the eyes to generic anime eyes. And the whole head parts just combine. I guess to me it's just a bit weird. Cool typing though. Something we rarely get. For this paradox form I chose Psychic Water. Try to tell me Sonar isn't just psychic powers to find something. Perhaps this isn't the wildest design out there, but it was fun and I enjoyed the finnies and how I designed them. Iron Scanner. The paradox folk when a psychic and water type. In a certain sci-fi magazine, they speak of a machine that would assist in charting the ocean depths without human interference. The large dish on Iron Scanner's head is capable of detecting and mapping out almost anything. It can detect the heartbeat of living life forms 
and determine threat levels based on this. If in danger, it can increase the brightness of the tip of their sonar dish to blinding levels, powerful enough that it can be fatal if too bright. Iron Scanner's ability is Quark Drive. Alright, the last card, a shiny Tinkerton, will it give us the luck? Probably not, but... Let's see what happened. Tear it open. This robot. Eh. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Do -do 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 -do. The Lucky Maractus. Chinchow. A pine go. Cool. Oh, he's near the um, ruinous gate. Oh, Pikachu. Cute. That's a cute Pikachu card. Oh, it's really nice of that one. Mouse Hall. Nice. Moonlit Hill. Very pretty. Charmeleon. A reverse hollow flittle. We love our flittles here. Uh, we got a shiny. No, reverse hollow scrafty. Nice. And final card is... Okay. Well, damn. That's a nice final card to draw. I love it. Okay, final spin, and we got... Yes, Scrafty, a very good boy. And a final, final spin, we got regional form. Maybe this is cheating a little bit, but one of my own Australian Pokemon, Beecham and Raswell, gave me the idea for this one. An Alolan form, Scrafty, is just super chill and based off the Hawaiian and all lizard. Scrafty's tail has grown a lot longer and now the skin aids in flotation and grip and has become a surfboard for Scrafty. Yes. It's weird making a Scrafty design just straight up without a mohawk. Instead, it's got like a little smaller bum. Maybe I should have made them super long, like an actual beach bum. Also, I thought because normal Scrafty has big baggy silly pants, that wouldn't work well for this form. So it's got tighter pants now with a little drawstring. Combined with the color, it looks a lot like board shorts. I'd love to see Scrafty and Goldengo surfing together in Alola. Scrafty is one of my favorite Pokemon, so getting to do this was a lot of fun. Scrafty, the hoodlum Pokemon, a normal and water type, a Lolan form. This form of Scrafty cares not for the ways of its Unovan counterpart, and would rather spend all of its days surfing with Mantine and other humans. Their large tail and waterproof shed skin combine together to make a surfboard. The skin secretes a waxy coating that helps to keep Scrafty on top of their board. They usually are incredibly friendly and will come up to people on the beach just to have a good time. They are lazy in battle however, preferring not to battle if they can avoid it. Scrafty in this form have the ability Swift Swim and Oblivious. Huh, and we are all done, 9 designs again. I love me some cardboard crack. Comment what you thought of the designs below and share this around with other addicts. Temporal Forces is the next set that comes out soon, so maybe look out for that. And with that, Paradox and Kitakami Mons galore. See you next time and thanks so much for watching. Give me your money. <laughs> <laughs>